a number of people who've left comments on my programmer versus engineer have said that my definition of an engineer and my definition of a programmer are wrong. And probably what I didn't do was give a strong enough example of what it means to be an engineer versus what the role of a programmer is. When I said that programmers don't solve problems, people came back with, oh, I solve problems all the time. Let me explain that your problems and an engineer's problems are very different. And I try not to be too egotistical, demeaning, whatever the right word is towards my audience. But the examples that most of the people put in as problems they solve or problems they solved in college aren't problems. When you are faced with the, how am I going to get my fox, my hen, and my bag of feed across the river, you may think that that's a problem. It's definitely a exercise in problem solving, but it's not a real problem. A real problem is, how do I solve a traveling salesperson problem in under X number of cycles? And to give you an example of some of the kinds of problems that I have solved over the years that are engineering problems, they include things like how to discern from two-dimensional video the motion vectors necessary to interpret the depth for a presentation in 3D. That is a problem. Looking at video, picking it apart, determining where objects are in the scene, and solving that with code. Now, my code when I solved that problem kind of sucked. I am not the world's greatest programmer. Just like I am not the world's greatest script writer, I am not the world's greatest music composer. So when I'm looking at solving a problem, I go through, solve the problem, create the algorithm, and hand it off to a programmer who then develops that code in order to be efficient, scalable, and run on multiple platforms. Things that I'm just not capable of doing. I speak a number of programming languages with enough proficiency that I can debug code and present code examples. But I don't generally write code that is infinitely scalable. That's what an architect does. And the person who writes the code should be writing to those architects' solutions. An engineer has to understand the problem and how to solve it with algorithms. An architect works on how you scale so that that problem can be solved across either multiple computers or across a large platform, and a programmer interprets those two directives into code. That isn't to demean the programmer, and that wasn't the purpose of saying that there's a difference between an engineer and a programmer. It's really just like I don't speak Japanese, so even if I am the world's greatest storyteller, I can't write a book in Japanese. I need somebody to do it. Or if I'm the world's greatest author, I still hand my stuff off to an editor to say, here are the grammatical mistakes you've made, here's where you need to increase the amount of detail. And a programmer really is that, like that editor. They go through and add the debugging, make sure that the code scales, add error handling. A lot of the code I write has no error handling. If, if you don't run the code exactly the way I run it, it blows up horribly. And that's because the code that I write doesn't have to do those things in most cases because I'm the only user. And when I'm the only user, it can do what it wants. When I need to hand it off to somebody who's going to mass deploy it, I hand it off to a programmer who adds all of the error handling, comes back to me and says, hey, every so often this thing occurs, what is the appropriate solution? And that's the difference between an engineer, an architect, and a programmer. I also want to address that people who said, I have a computer engineering degree. If you have a bachelor's, you have nothing. I don't care what it is in. If you have a bachelor's, you have nothing. When you have a master's or a doctorate, you have something. And a great example of this is, if you have a bachelor's in psychology, you aren't qualified to do anything. Basically, you can be the school counselor, maybe. If you have a master's in psychology, you can be a therapist, some places. 
If you have a doctor's in psychology, you can be a psychologist. So think of it that way. With computer, is it's the same thing. If you have a bachelor's in computer science, computer engineering, system administration, IT systems, information systems, those are all basically the same degree because you have two and a half years of the fluff that's required by your school in order to graduate, the English, the biology, the chemistry, those kinds of things, but you don't have four years of hardcore computer application stuff or the math or the science that goes with it. You can gain that stuff in the field, that's what I've done, and it's different. My approach to engineering is different than somebody who has a doctorate in computer engineering. But saying that you are an engineer because you got a computer engineering degree does not make it so. Maybe I will grant you that you can call yourself an engineer if you are a member of one of the engineering societies that is around. Or if you are part of an engineering standards body. I'm part of the SIMPTI engineering standards body and a voting member on the C24 committee. So I can consider myself an engineer. My last test for are you a scientist or engineer versus just a programmer? And I know I just said just, but the difference between a science or an engineer is whether or not you are generating intellectual property. If you are generating code that could have patents filed against it or research papers written against it, you are probably a computer scientist or a computer engineer. Hopefully this will wrap up some of the flames that have been going on in the thread, but realistically, this is my view on the world, this is the general view of employers, and this is the difference between being that 100K level programmer or architect and being the 200 to 300K a year employee that comes with being a person who generates intellectual property.